Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I've been on the lookout for tech gifts and I'll be doing a couple of quick videos like this one over the next couple of weeks with some of the things that I've tracked down. This one I thought was interesting, the Lenovo Smart Clock Essential. This is a Google Assistant that's got an old school clock on the front of it. And we're going to take a quick look at what this is all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this smart clock is all about. Now, the price point on this is about $30 at Best Buy at the moment. You should be able to find this one coming in at around the same price as an entry-level Echo device or perhaps one of the Nest Home mini devices that Google manufactures directly. There isn't much to this. It is basically a Google Assistant speaker. So you can issue commands to it with the hey, you know who word, and it will do pretty much anything that a regular Google Assistant device will do. Now, it does have a display on the front. And this is not a simulation of an old school digital display. This is an actual old school digital display. So this will not show anything beyond what you see on the screen right now. This is going to give you the time. You'll have the weather outside at your location along with the temperature and the day of the week. Uh, you can browse the alarms here by pushing the button on the top. But this is all that this display will show you. In fact, if you set a timer, the timer doesn't even show up on here. It'll just beep when the timer concludes. So this is not going to be like one of those Google devices that has a screen. Uh, this is truly an old school clock with a smart speaker attached to it. It's definitely pretty small as you can see here, so well suited for a small nightstand. It is wrapped in fabric, which feels very nice. You got a nice texture to it there. Uh, you do have some buttons on the top for controlling the clock. So you have a plus and a minus key for volume control. You can also do some rudimentary adjustments to your alarms with this, which I'll show you in a few minutes. You have a play button here, which will play and pause media that's running to the device. And then you have your alarm button here to see what alarms you have coming up on the unit. Now in this area, if you tap on it when the alarm is going off, it will uh, snooze the alarm. So your snooze bar is basically a hard tap on the top of the unit in this fabric area here. Now that's only going to work though if you have an alarm going that you set. Timers do not work with the tap here. You have to use your verbal command or push a button to get the timers to stop working. On the back, you've got a USB port here for charging up your phones and other devices. You also have the a mic is muted. mute button for muting, back on. muting your microphone if you want to have some privacy. There's no camera on this, but it does work with Google Duo, which is their voice communication app. Now, in this area here, this ring around the back of it, uh, is a little LED night light. Now this will turn on only when you ask it to. Now it's not very bright, but it is bright enough to find your way to the bathroom. And if you would prefer not to ask it to turn the light on, you can hold down the volume minus key here and that will also turn the light on. As you can see, it's pretty much blown out by my studio lights here, but it's kind of a nice touch to it. Now, there are two ways to set alarms on the clock. You can do it old school through the buttons at the top, or you can ask it to set an alarm. Let's start off with the old school option first, though. What you do is hold down the alarm button here, and it will create kind of a default setting. And so right now, it's going to do that alarm every day of the week, but I can limit it to just the work days. I'll push the alarm thing here to go down to the hour, so I can maybe have it at 7.05 uh, a.m. and then uh, lock it into position one here. And if you just leave it, what you'll see in a second is the data getting uploaded to the Google Cloud, so it will remember it should we lose power or something. And you just gotta wait for it to cycle through all of that. Now, additionally, I can set an alarm verbally, but you have to be very specific about what you want. You need to specify the time, of course, but also what days of the week you want the alarm to go off and what you want the clock to do when the alarm does get sounded. So by default, it'll make an alarm sound, but you can also have it play a playlist from your assigned music service through the Google Home app, or you can have it play an online radio station, but you have to specify all of that stuff up front. So let me show you an example of how to set that. Set a radio alarm each weekday for 8 a.m. All right, on weekdays. And what would you like me to play? WNPR radio. There, 
I'll play WNPR radio on weekdays at 8 a.m. So now we've got at least hopefully two alarms uh, set in our thing here. And if I hit the button, you can see that first one that we did manually and then the one that we did through a voice command. Now you can go in and edit the time and the dates on this one, but you can't change what the alarm does without issuing a verbal command. So it's kind of a mashup of old and new, but that kind of gives it some charm, I think. The audio quality of the speaker is not great for music. It is pretty decent for spoken word, but it's not something that I think would give an audiophile quality sound to it. So you might want to get one of those bigger smart speakers if you care about audio quality. But for waking up in the morning to a news station or something, I think it will do well. Now there is no AM or FM radio on this, so whatever radio station you're asking for has to be accessible to it over the internet. It also supports Chromecasting audio, and I've got an app open here called Plex Amp, which is part of the Plex personal media server, which in full disclosure is an occasional sponsor here on the channel. And the bedroom speaker here is what it's called. And as you can see, it's showing up as an audio device on my list of Chromecast devices. And so I can select that here. And what that will do is connect through my local network from my phone. And now I can have music from my phone play on the clock and I can start and stop that music using the play button here at the top or control it from my phone. So you do have some audio chromecasting abilities using the clock on your network. But note though that there are many apps that support chromecasting that will not support our clock here because this is an audio only chromecast device. So for example, if I click on the chromecast icon in YouTube, we won't see my bedroom speaker here on the list because it is not a video device and that's all that YouTube supports. So you will find a lot of things that don't cast to it, but most audio apps should. Unfortunately, there is no way to use it as a Bluetooth speaker, which would have solved this problem. So if it doesn't support Chromecasting and the music service doesn't support Google, you're going to be out of luck with this one. So overall, for the price point, I think it's a pretty decent little clock that adds some smart functionality to the mix. So if you were looking for a smart speaker for your bedroom, this one might be worth looking at because you do get a nice clock as part of the deal as well, and it's not all that much more than some of the other lower-end smart speakers that are out there. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Hot Sauce and Video Games, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Thomas Anfang, Jim Tannis, and Handheld Obsession. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.